Welcome to Explore SDSU 2022. My name is John Abraham. I'm the chair of Mechanical Engineering. Welcome to Mechanical Engineering uh, Virtual Explore SDSU 2022. I would like to point out that there is an in-person Explore SDSU on April 9th uh, as well. So this is the first of two uh, events. Uh, this is virtual and the next one will be in person on campus. Uh, I have written here the uh, mechanical engineering website. I hope that in addition to listening to this presentation of mine, that you will be able to uh, go to the website indicated here, just say mechanical engineering at SDSU, and you will get to the site and explore uh, the site because there are a lot of things, important, uh, interesting things that are posted there. The landing page on which you will land is shown here in the picture here. Uh, this is our mechatronics team from uh, uh, last year. Uh, who actually won uh, a, a top prize in the competition which was held here in San Diego. The, uh, since, you are, uh, since this event is virtual, I thought I will start by showing uh, a couple of buildings uh, which are part of uh, the College of Engineering. Um, this is our new. This is our new engineering and uh, interdisciplinary sciences building. Uh, there are mechanical engineering labs which are located in these buildings. Uh, so hopefully, when you come to campus, you will be able to uh, access. Mechanical engineering. Uh, I think uh, if someone is unmuted, can you please mute? Thank you very much. Uh, so I want to first start by giving a profile of the mechanical engineering department. Uh, in fall 2021, we had 1,036 1, undergraduate students, 105 graduate students, 21 tenure tenure track faculty. Uh, we are expecting to add three more faculty in fall 2022. Uh, we have in addition 10 lecturers. Uh, these lecturers are full time. Uh, or, or rather their primary function is just uh, teaching classes. Uh, many of them are experienced uh, executives from industry and so on. And there are four staff members uh, within the department in addition to two uh, dedicated uh, advisors uh, who are uh, in the Center for Student Success in Engineering. Uh, let me talk a bit about the mechanical engineering program. Uh, so when a freshman enters the mechanical engineering program, uh, the freshman is en entering what is known as the pre-major uh, pa uh, part of the program. Uh, when the uh, student has uh, cleared uh, in certain critical courses which are uh, necessary for the success of the uh, uh, success of the student in the program, uh, those courses are listed here, uh, Math 150, Calculus 1, Math 151, Calculus 2, Physics 195, 196, so Physics 192, Chemistry, and then any 200 is a Mechanical Engineering course, Statics, uh, with a minimum grade of C, as well as a GPA higher than 2.7. Uh, then the student becomes eligible to transition into the Mechanical Engineering major. Uh, typically, this happens in the uh, second semester of the sophomore year, although, although there are some who may clear it in the first semester of the sophomore year, and some, for various reasons, may uh, take until the first semester of the junior year. But, of course, we would like this transition from pre-major to major to take place as, uh, as soon as possible after the freshman enrolls in the uh, program. Once the student is in the major, the uh, student can be in either the mechanical engineering, uh, regular mechanical engineering program, or in the mechanical engineering program with a bioengineering emphasis. 
the degree that is granted once all the requirements are met is the Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. For those who are majoring in mechanical engineering with bioengineering emphasis, uh, this Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering will also indicate that it's with bioengineering emphasis. There is also an opportunity for uh, undergraduate students to uh, do a four plus one combined uh, Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering and Master of Science in either Mechanical Engineering or Master of Science in Bioengineering. Uh, that is also indicated on this chart. Uh, typically, this will take uh, five years. So the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, with this plan, uh, students will start doing their research work maybe in the second semester of the junior year, continue through the senior year. And so once they complete the requirements for the Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, then they will be uh, spending most of their focus just on the thesis work for the master's program. So in the final year, so that's four plus one program. The uh, program has uh, heavy emphasis on engineering fundamentals. Uh, so in the, within the first two years, of course, it's uh, fundamentals are not just engineering, but those foundational courses in calculus, physics, chemistry, uh, which are critical for success in mechanical engineering, that is also important. But then that's followed by fundamental courses in uh, mechanical engineering, like statics, dynamics, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, and so on. And then as the student uh, progresses uh, through the uh, program, uh, there will be um, more practical uh, applied sort of uh, courses. So engineering fundamentals are critical. Uh, hands-on experience is emphasized, and this hands-on experience starts, in fact, uh, right from the freshman year when students have to take uh, a computer-aided design course. Uh, within this course, the students have to design things uh, and uh, look at 3D images and so on. And when they come to their sophomore year, they have labor lab courses in mechatronics, lab courses in materials, and third year, there are lab courses in mechatronics and fluid mechanics. And uh, then, of course, uh, there is a mechanical systems and thermal systems uh, labs course. And then in the final year, there is an year long uh, senior design projects uh, course uh, as well. So that's that we refer to as our capstone program. Um, undergraduate research uh, is strongly encouraged. We uh, in, encourage our, our undergraduate students when they are especially in their uh, uh, junior year to uh, work with their faculty member uh, in, a, in a research group to participate in undergraduate research projects. And, uh, and this is a very successful, a significant uh, percentage of our undergraduate students actu actually participate in such projects. And three units of uh, research credit can be applied towards the uh, graduation requirements in mechanical engineering. There is a strong collaboration with uh, interaction with industries, especially as part of the senior design projects course. Uh, many of our senior design projects are sponsored by industries in San Diego. Uh, and the students uh, may get to go to those industrial sites and do some of their work there. Typically, they have mentorship from uh, the industry as well as part of that project. We encourage students to participate in student clubs and organizations. In fact, uh, after my presentation at about 11.30, I have invited uh, uh, the president of the Aztec Electric Racing to make a presentation on their uh, electric racing club. Uh, and immediately after his presentation, I have invited uh, Aliza Brunen, uh, who leads a senior design project. Uh, it's, a, it's an exciting piece of work. Uh, she will be talking about that uh, with her team. Uh, internships are strongly encouraged. Uh, we do not give credit for internships, but we strongly encourage students, especially during the summertime, uh, to participate in internships uh, in local industries or uh, in industries uh, outside the state or other parts of the state. 
these are uh, some pictures from some of our labs. Uh, some of them are research labs. So this is a picture on the top left. Uh, that is from um, our nanotechnology lab. The uh, top uh, center is from our bioengineering lab. The top right is from our uh, experimental mecha mechanics lab. Uh, the bottom uh, left is from our um, powder technology lab. Uh, then the center is center bottom is from our robotics lab, and the bottom right is from our uh, uh, is also from a particle uh, technology kind of lab, but uh, it's working with flames and so on. Uh, I want to. Uh, I talked about research. Uh, there is very active research going on in um, critical areas. Uh, just uh, quickly going through that in bioengineering, bioengineering is one of the research areas where undergraduate students can participate in uh, research projects. Uh, within this area, there is work going on in, the air, uh, in neural engineering, and I've listed the faculty who are involved in this research work in medical devices, uh, cancer cell mechanics, uh, smart health, uh, there is the SDSU Health Link Center for Transdisciplinary Health Disparities Research, Biomaterials, Biofluidics, Biosensors. So these are all in the bioengineering uh, area led by these faculty members. And students can participate in research projects. In energy and environment, uh, there is work on fire safety and fire spread, as a matter of fact, both on Earth and in space. Uh, there's work in renewable energy, solar energy, wind energy, wave energy. And of course, there's continuing work in the area of trying to maximize the efficiency, thereby reducing the carbon emissions from fossil fuel combustion as well. Energy storage is a very uh, important area uh, and growing area uh, led by these faculty members. And the Department of Energy has an industrial assessment center, which is uh, housed within uh, the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the College of Engineering. And these pictures here are from um, publications and textbooks that the faculty have published and also some of their research activities. Materials and, ma and manufacturing is another important area of research within the department. Uh, faculty are leading developments in sintering technology, um, and they have developed uh, innovative new technologies for making super hard ceramics as used in bulletproof vests and so on. That's just an example. Uh, Powder-based materials processing, including synthesis of carbon nanotubes, nanotube reinforced aluminum composites, uh, lightweight matrix composites, uh, developing materials for supercapacitors, that's for energy storage, development of scalable thin films deposition techniques for corrosion protect protection, and the materials development from molecular level to the level of engineering devices. You can see these uh, pictures from, um, from atomic scales to micro scales to macro scales. So there are simulations going on at these uh, <coughs> different levels. Additive manufacturing is a very important and growing area within the department. In fact, one of the uh, new hires who will join in August is in this particular area. Self-healing materials, nanofabrication, optical metrology. Uh, so there are uh, various areas of materials and manufacturing which are, uh, uh, in, are very strong in the department and undergraduate students are encouraged to participate in these research activities. Mechanics uh, is another important area. Um, this uh, research in uh, multifunctional materials, shock tolerant protection for military and civilian applications, next generation wireless energy transfer mechanics of sintering. Uh, and then in robotics and automation, we have faculty working in improving the performance of cyber physical systems, including robots using machine learning techniques analogous to human behavior. Automation and mechatronics in manufacturing, I had point, pointed this out on the last slide, is uh, very critical. Smart sensors and actuators for integrated systems, including for smart health and so on. 
uh, and then dynamical systems, cooperative robo robotics, deep learning, motion planning. Uh, so these are all different research areas in these uh, robotics and automation as well. Okay, uh, so I want to uh, delve a bit more into the capstone uh, experience for our uh, students. Um, these are some of the companies that sponsor projects uh, in, at, uh, in our capstone program. There's Northrop Grumman, Solar Turbines, ASML, Cubix, Spayward, DNK Engineering. I've listed a whole, I won't read to all of them. Uh, but in addition, there is a sponsorship also from government agencies and uh, nonprofit agencies. And so in fact, uh, the uh, senior design project that uh, Elisa will be talking about is sponsored by NASA uh, with supplementary sponsorship also from and some companies. Uh, these are uh, some of the senior design projects. Uh, as part of the capstone experience, students are expected to go through uh, the design of the uh, um, system, uh, and then through various, uh, uh, there are various design reviews, preliminary design reviews, critical design reviews, and then uh, they have to go through the entire process of planning for the fabrication, do the fabrication, and make the device work. I mean, so this is uh, critical. So these are some of the projects that students have worked on recently. I don't. I, I can't describe each one of them, but uh, you can also see some of the labs where students actually work. Uh, this is one of our fabrication facilities. We have two primary fabrication facilities where students are uh, able to work and uh, build these projects. One of it is shown here. Uh, and uh, these are some of the projects. So uh, this, is, this is just a picture from that fabrication facility, which I just showed you. But this is a picture from the class. And as I recall, this is a project presentation by the students to the class um, because they have these design reviews where they have to review the project with the uh, instructor as well as the uh, class. Uh, again, some of the projects uh, they're showing here. As part of this, the students are expected to show that this system works uh, but also make uh, presentations to the sponsors and uh, instructors as well. Uh, in fact, we have been, we, we take great pride in our uh, capstone program. Uh, just as an example, last year, our students, uh, we were one of the teams out of many teams from across the country, which was selected to as finalists in the 2021 Moon to Mars Ice Prospecting Challenge Competition. And these are the other teams which are selected as finalists. So uh, the team uh, which participated in this uh, was also sponsored by Collins Aerospace in addition to NASA. They uh, actually went to Virginia, uh, to NASA Lang uh, Langley, yes. Uh, and uh, actually uh, participated in the competition on site. Uh, and did really well, especially for a team that was doing it for the first time. Many of these teams have done it several times before. So we're very proud of our team, but also our capstone program in general. Uh, where do our graduates work? Uh, so when uh, students graduate, they go, these are some of the companies where our graduates uh, go to go for their employment. Uh, Northrop Grumman, Dexcom, ASMO, uh, and several of these companies sponsor uh, uh, projects in our capstone program. I have uh, some time for questions. So I will uh, pause here for questions for a few minutes before I hand it over to Juan Rojas. Yes. Any questions? Okay. 
can unmute. No questions. I see that Juan is here, so I'm going to hand it over to Juan. If I can. Uh, Juan, are you going to, uh, can I give you uh, share uh, co-host privileges and you can share? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me try to get your name here. And I need to find a participant. Let's go. Yeah, here you are. More, make co host Yes, so I'll stop sharing and you can share. Yes, Thank you. Please. Let's see, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Perfect. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Um, I guess I'll get started. Hello, everybody. My name is Juan Rojas. I am a fourth year mechanical engineer, um, currently in my final semester at SDSU, and I am the vice president of Aztec Electric Racing. And it is my honor to welcome you all to explore SDSU and tell you a little bit more about some of the opportunities you will have here. So what is Aztec Electric Racing? Who are we? What do we do? Um, well, one of the th first things to know is that we are part of an international society called the Society of Automotive Engineers. Um, and so we compete as part of the collegiate design series, specifically the electric division. And so what this means is that there are schools from across the world that will design, create, fabricate, test, and bring their cars um, to a central competition. And we're talking about 75 schools from across the world, from Poland to Germany to the UK, um, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, they all come to compete and we are among the competitors. And so the, this whole electric field, electric division is a really recent advancement um, being created in 2013 when people started recognizing the need for um, students and engineers with experience with electric vehicles, as you guys can imagine today with Tesla. Um, and so for our competition, it's an annual event and we are currently on track to compete this year in Michigan in June. So a little bit about the competition itself. Um, the images you are seeing here are from a competition called SoCal Shootout, uh, which was a local competition which hosted teams from the southwestern portion of the United States, UCLA, USC, US, uh, University of Arizona, and so on. And at competition itself, um, there are several events that we are evaluated on, um, three of which are static and four of which are dynamic. The dynamic events mostly pertain to the running of the vehicle. You know, how does your vehicle perform? Um, all of these cars are student designed. So it's really exciting to see how your design, your engineering feats go into creating something so powerful yet so small. Um, and then the static events are events where teams are evaluated based on their project management skills, their design presentation, business analysis. And so this is supposed to give you the experience of being in a real job. Um, you're not simply gonna be designing something with no cost, uh, with no cost limit. You will have some real world challenges. And all of these events are judged by members of industry from Tesla to Yokohama, to Rivian, to GM. So this is a pretty big event um, and potential recruiting ground. And so what you're seeing on the left side are our current members, our current leads, I should say, from Clint, the president, myself as vice president, Joseph, Kyle, Gabriel, and Daisy. Um, and among us are people from sophomore standing to junior standing to seniors, from mechanical engineers to electrical engineers, computer engineers, and aerospace. Um, so we're really a diverse team that tries to um, get as many people involved with this project as possible, which is really important because I can testify that when you're at work, 
or in any field, you're going to be working with people not from your discipline. So it's nice to have those considerations and real world experiences already under your belt. Um, and the image you see on the right is the more, most recent image of our team um, taken this past December. Um, these are all the members that are involved on the team that each have their own role in designing, fabricating, and helping us assemble this vehicle. Um, and we're currently trying to work with the business management and art and design students so that way we can really try to get that interdisciplinary. Um, so it's not just for engineers, but for everyone. So you might meet a couple new people, get some new perspectives. So what do we offer? Well, like I previously mentioned, this is a hands-on project. You will be giving, getting a lot of the engineering experience, a lot of project management, a lot of business management, um, and not just for something that has been done before. We are still an emerging industry. Um, this team is only five years old, uh, which may sound like a long time, but in terms of technology, it's still pretty young. And so, as you can see on the bottom right image, the this is straight from the SpaceX website. Um, some preferred qualifications is this project hands-on experience, um, demonstrated ability to, to own hardware or systems with integrated engineering teams. So this is exactly perfect if you're on this team or active in any student organization, getting that hands-on experience is what's gonna set you apart from everyone else at SDSU. So I can test, I can speak to the fact that a lot of our alumni within the past two years have either worked at Tesla or the new electric startup company, Rivian, um, including an alumni I'm going to be mentioning pretty soon. So there's a lot of potential for you to grow, learn, and just advance, not just at SDSU, but in your career. So to kind of go into some of the skills you guys will actually learn, um, these are skills that you guys can throw on your resume, um, which when people look for, um, is definitely gonna set you apart. So things such as teamwork, especially people not from your discipline, systems engineering, that top, level or top level management understanding of what is your big picture. Um, the system or engineering design, fabrication, analysis, and testing. You guys have the opportunity to design your own components all in one year. A majority of our parts, including our circuit boards, our enclosures, the chassis, suspension, all of that is student design made and tested ourselves. So there's a lot of opportunity to get your hands and make your mark on this team. Um, but besides those technical skills, we also like to practice some of the soft skills such as public speaking, because quite frankly, you know, us engineers, it's maybe hard to go out and or step out of your comfort zone, but it's gonna be very important that you step out of your comfort zone and kind of feel out what you want to do. You know, I've found myself wanting to be in a management position ever since joining the team. I don't want to do uh, design. I want to do manufacturing. So this is a good place to kind of feel out what you want to do and get in some experience while you're doing it. Um, and so this is the alumni I was discussing you. Um, Emily Bitgood. She graduated two years ago as part of the class of 2020, 2020 with her degree in mechanical engineering. Um, she spent two years on the team. And one of the things AER does is we have a senior or the College of Engineering has a design capstone program. And so AER will typically sponsor programs um, with Dr. Schaefer, senior design professor, or maybe even ECEs, electrical and computer engineering as well. And so I was personally working with Emily to sponsor her project um, to design and fabricate the new chassis for the racing team. Um, and not just the chassis itself, but the manufacturing process behind it, which is really innovative. Um, and she told me that through her work on this project, she was able to be employed at Rivian and her role at Rivian is a chassis design engineer, which played right into her senior design project. And so Emily has gone on to do some 
pretty amazing things, um, like take part of the Trans America Trail Test of Rivian's latest truck. And it was it was just yesterday that one of the mem one of the leads, Daisy, she was telling me how she saw a Rivian truck um, on the road today. So it made me feel like a little warm inside to know that because of Emily's work here, she's gone on to do such great things in the um, automotive field. But it's not just the automotive field you can go into. We had members going to SpaceX, Northrop Grumman, and just various parts of the United States. So AER is a place that you can grow. Um, and so this here is just an image of our latest car. Um, this is the car we will be using when we get to competition this summer. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask, or you can visit our website, aztecelectricracing.com, or send us an email, aztecelectricracing at gmail.com. We're a student-led organization, so please be patient with us, but we will try to do everything we can to get you started, ready to go. Thank you very much, Juan, for that excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I'll pause here for three minutes uh, to give Juan a chance to answer any questions you may have. No questions, so we will move forward then. Uh, thank you, Juan, again. I just hang around for a few, mi few more minutes, just in case questions come up later. Uh, now I will invite Elisa, uh, who is the lead team lead on one of our senior design projects to make a presentation on her uh, project and uh, her team's project, which is very exciting. Elisa, I've, yeah. I've given you sharing privileges. Sounds good. Can everyone see this screen? Yes. Perfect. So as um, Dr. Abraham has mentioned, um, one of the big parts of being a student at SDSU also includes our senior design capstone project. So we've been working thankfully on probably the coolest project that we've gotten this year, which is a NASA sponsored project. Um, going off from what Dr. Abraham said, there was a past team also that had a different kind of challenge. Um, we are specifically looking at the NASA Robotic Mining Competition, also known as Lunabotics. Um, and in this competition, we are Team Hades, um, which stands for Handy at Stick Digging and Extraction System. We are made out of a five-member mechanical team and a five team members being electrical and computer engineering students. So going off from that, um, those 10 members, um, I'm here joined with three others. So me personally, I'm Alicia Brunin. I'm our team lead. I'm a fifth year mechanical engineering student, but I'm also doing an emphasis in bioengineering. Um, my job as a team lead is doing a lot of organizational stuff and also coordinating with everybody, and keeping everybody on track so that we're good to go to the competition. Um, I'm also joined by Sterling and John Paul and Josh, if you could, would like to introduce yourselves. Yeah, my name is Sterling. I'm a fourth year mechanical engineering student um, and I've been the design and research lead for this project this year. Yeah, my name's Josh. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, my name is Josh. I'm one of the computer engineers on the team. I'm a fourth year computer engineering major. Um, and I've been working on a control systems for this device. My name is uh, John. I'm the I'm a computer engineering, but uh, I'm the ECE lead for the computer end of this project. Uh, basically, have, I'm kind of in charge and kind of have my hands on everything. So exactly. Okay, so what do we actually have to do? So we all know that now with um, NASA, for example, exploring more the lunar surface in order to then move to the Martian surface, um, not just only NASA, but also SpaceX and other companies are doing this as well. But in order to actually build a hub in these new environments, we need to be able to use those materials that are local to that environment. 
Um, for example, we have to um, build a lunar mining robot um, that is about to dig to um, through a 30 centimeter layer of BP-1 um, that's roughly a foot. Um, this BP-1 layer is a very dusty kind of material. It's very electrostatic, so it gets everywhere. But the problem is that we only want to actually mine for the layer that's below that. Um, that's roughly half a foot. Um, it's very icy. It's very gravel, a lot of rocks, um, very dense material. So in the competition, we're looking to mine the most amount of icy regolith um, amongst our competitors. But other factions that we also need to um, mention here is that we also have to have our robot being at least partially autonomous. That means um, we basically are hand off and the robot does most of the stuff by itself. Um, and then again, because of the dust and then electrostatic properties, um, the robot also has to have a dust-free operation as well as being dust-free, um, having a dust-free design. Um, and before even going to the mining zone, we have to go through obstacles such as craters and boulders so it needs to be able to navigate through that. So in order to have such a project, we also have to have a good project management plan. So basically in this corner over here, you can see the different parts that we are going through. NASA is giving us a lot of deliverables as well. Same with our capstone senior design class. So one thing that you will get out of this um, is that you really get an industry-like situation of going through the different steps of a product being from research to the end of the closeout, but also going through the different parts of the prototyping, the testing, the launch and the assembly. So this is one of the big things that we would include here. On to Sterling with our design. Thank you. Yeah, so um, as you enter mechanical engineering, um, and I'm pretty sure most of the engineering disciplines, then you learn how to do 3D modeling using SolidWorks um, in your first year of education. Um, so that was a program that was used to design um, this whole assembly, which is, I think, like 480 plus components right now. Um, so this is a very useful skill that you'll learn to use. And that's what a lot of design is, um, is where you can create uh, pretty much anything you want in a 3D world. Uh, and then later you get to <clears throat> create it and physically bring it to life, which is probably one of the most rewarding parts or at least the most rewarding part of engineering to me. Um, so yeah, here's our uh, design for this year's NASA Lunabotics uh, robot. Um, so our team spent the first semester designing this, and then in the second semester, which we're currently in right now, um, then we get into manufacturing uh, this robot. You go to the next slide. Uh, here's another slide um, to show how our robot's going to move. Um, so some of the design constraints that we had to get around was being able to fit within a certain size uh, parameter that NASA gave us, as well as being able to dig deep enough um, past that layer of BP-1, and then also have some sort of deposition movement um, where you can dump the gravel after. So it was really fun designing this thing. Um, there are a lot of things to think about um, to consider through the whole process, but uh, three or four years of education, then um, really challenging tasks become a lot more doable. And you'll also learn how to make the drawings. Um, so when you're designing components in the real world, then <clears throat> you'll design a component and then you'll need to make a drawing for it. So then the machinists can manufacture uh, whatever components are um, that need to be created. So these are a really important um, aspect of doing design engineering is because you need to create drawings that are readable for machinists to um, manufacture your, uh, your parts. Yes, so in the end, after we've basically designed everything, we also need to be able to incorporate and integrate every single subsystem that we have to each other. So for example, we create something like a system level diagram in order to help us really know how we're connecting everything. For example, we have the drivetrain, the mainframe, the deposition, the excavation, the electrical, and also the power distribution. So this kind of diagram helps us to navigate and also know how everything's connected and how everything will work together. 
So the next slide is basically a quick video of how everything looks. So here is basically the design that we have. Um, you can see the scoop system, which are gonna be digging up all the um, isoricolith. The big box will be our electronic housing box. Um, the black in the bottom is our battery housing. So we can have power distribution. You can see the linear actuator in order to have it um, go up and down. This is our prototype for the drivetrain with 3D printed wheels as of right now. Um, each wheel has its own motor as well. Um, this is from our electrical and computer engineering side of the team. Um, this tank was used in order to test our navigation and drivetrain code um, on a small scale kind of um, product. Um, as you can see, it works well. Um, the software, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be using first with an Arduino. Um, and then the ECE team put this onto a joystick to in order to then later integrate into a Xbox controller, which will be taken to the competition. So here you can see it more in action. Um, and here, I think for the, especially the electrical and computer engineering aspect of it, it's really cool to see a code or a written text come to life in order to like really physically maneuver it. So this now is actually being done by the Xbox controller that we'll be using at the competition, which is really interesting as well. And here's our mechanical baby, I would say, our excavation. This was the first time that we turned it on. Um, this is just uh, without the other sub-assemblies itself. Um, we just wanted to know how it's running. And then later, these tests are being conducted in order to determine the motor speed as well as the linear actuator. Here's the excavation belt more in action. So this was our first big test of seeing how um, the excavation belt is digging and it's doing really well. We have a minimum to get a, uh, a singular kilogram of IC regolith and our in this test that you're seeing, we already surpassed that by a significant amount. So we're looking good for the competition. Um, here, I would also like to mention that this, for example, in this part of the video, we're building a little test bed. We call it the Hades house, essentially, um, which we'll be testing in cement mix in order to simulate the top layer. But here, I would like to also mention that we're one of the two universities out of California that are even going to the final. So the final will be at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida in May. Um, aside from us, SDSU, the only other Californian school that is going is CSU Long Beach. So keep that in mind as well, and that you could also be part of such a project um, in four years when you are doing your senior design capstone project. Um, yeah, I think if you guys have any questions, please let us know. We would love to answer any question that you guys have. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Sterling. Thank you, John. Thank you to your whole team for uh, an excellent presentation and uh, this amazing work. Thank you very much. Any questions for Alisa and her team or for Juan? Or for me at this point? <laughs> I noticed that uh, Haley Becker from admissions is also uh, attending. So if there are any specific questions related to admissions, uh, you can ask as well. So she may be, she will be able to answer those. It's a very quiet group of participants. <laughs> no questions. Okay, well, we're going to stop here. Are there, are there any questions in the chat? No, there are no questions in the chat.